Hey, welcome back. We're here live in Las Vegas. This is SiliconANGLE and Wikibon's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events district of Silicon Illinois. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE. I'm joined by my co-host, Dave Vellante. Our next guest, Bruno Kurtik, founding VP, product strategy for Sumo Logic. Welcome to The Cube. Thank you very much. Pleasure so to be here. So, you guys are in the same hot market right now. Um, Splunk went public. We just covered the Splunk conference. They're a competitor of yours. Um, there's plenty of beach for everyone, right? There's fruits are coming off the tree, as they say, in the paradise are called big data. So you guys really are in a hot market, you know, getting data out of logs, what do they call it, data waste, data exhaust, whatever you want to call it, there is data flying around everywhere, certainly more than ever, certainly with cloud, again, more connected devices, internet of things, you name it, it's thrown off data. Machine data, people data, log data, so hot market. So tell us about what you guys are doing as a company and then the role here at AWS. Uh, sure, so we, um, we're focusing on the machine data, so as you say, the exhaust of IT infrastructure and other things such as the Internet of Things, machine to machine data, things like that. So we, um, we have a different angle on, uh, on this data set, right? We, we fundamentally believe that uh, human and a, and a query language simply can't uh, conquer this data set that the data growth is so, um, so big that, and exponential in nature that in order to actually mine it for insights and actually be able to solve availability and performance issues, security issues as they emerge, you need to have more than just a human looking at the data. So we've invested heavily into machine learning capabilities, <coughs> essentially to augment what a human does by applying a very smart algorithm to pre-process the data, to boil the ocean, and really try to find areas of focus for a human so to dive deeper on. So you're not taking the human out of the equation. No, we're not. You're trying to dramatically compress the time it takes a human to get to the right decision. That's right. We believe actually that it is, that, you know, you can have a very smart algorithm, but that smart algorithm isn't going to do anything without really a human expert input. So we believe that ultimately it's the combination of human and an algorithm that uh, will enable um, enterprises to find insights in this data set. Somebody said to me the other day, I wonder if, Bruno, you could comment on this. We were down in uh, Hadoop World, we had a, our own event, Big Data NYC. Abhi Mehta, I think, John, was on theCUBE, and he basically said, look, algorithms are free. Really, it's what you do with that algorithm, it's how you integrate them, it's the applications that you write. Do you, do you agree with that? Oh, I ab absolutely do. So the, you know, it's the sort of what, what did Google do, you know, years ago when they came up with their page rank algorithm, right? It was a great algorithm, but it's the fact that they harvest the human feedback and merge that with the algorithm to actually make them the most effective search engine, right? And so we fundamentally believe that, that you know, algorithms are a dime a dozen. It is how you use it, it's how you collect the data, it's how you collect the insight and the feedback to the algorithm that actually makes it more powerful. So Internet of Things obviously is uh, you know, all the rage, industrial internet, that's a trend that is wind at your back, obviously, because you're saying there's so much data and that's just going to create ridiculous amounts of data. Yeah. Talk about your, your play there and what that means to you. So one of the, one of the th reasons why we are actually built in AWS and why we decided that we're going to make this as a cloud offering was not because we wanted to make a, a cloud version of, of an on-premise software, it's because the cloud fundamentally offers us um, the architectural methodology or architectural uh, possibility to actually keep up with the volumes of data that, that, that we're facing today. So we are in AWS and we, we run our footprint across multiple physical locations. We're actually able to scale our footprint on demand as, as our data growth gr uh, goes up, we can, we can expand our, our footprint and as it winds down, we can contract it as we need. So it's an on-demand compute and it's all about the architecture and how you actually try to leverage that compute. So, so we've architected the product in order to keep up with the data volumes that are you know, for the next decade. So how do you guys deal on the platform side? One of the things that we find interesting in this market is that it's kind of a use case where it's a tool, it's a hammer, everything looks like a nail, that's the old expression, but in reality, the initial use cases that we've seen is, in this market is, it's a big aspirin, pain relief. And, and, but really it's about, not just that, it's enablement. So talk about what you guys are enabling, because what ends up happening in all these cases, we talk to your customers and Splunk customers, is that, hey, this liberates me, I get to find stuff faster, I get to do something else. And so really it's not just solving a problem, it enables them. Can you talk a little bit about how you see that evolving? What is that enabling? What's that next step? What are cu customers bolting on top of your platform? So uh, that's actually a great point. Um, you know, we obviously start with the, those core use cases that you know, every customer of ours wants to satisfy. You know, we start with availability and performance, making sure that they reduce downtime, they reduce 
the amount of time that it takes to repair issues, you know, moving to security, to detect security issues and all of that. And so, yes, of course, we, we start with compressing the amount of time it takes our customers to find those critical events. But it doesn't stop there, right? Part of this sort of whole SaaS, uh, SaaS offering aspect of our product is that not only do we compress that time and free up your time, free up IT time to actually go chasing the right issues, but we also reduce their dependence or their requirement for them to actually manage the underlying infrastructure to manage those logs, right? And with on-premise vendors, you actually have to spend a significant amount of your team's time to actually wire that technology. And in our, in, from, our, from our perspective, you know, I believe in Adam Smith, right? You know, <laughs> specialization. We don't want to rack and stack servers. We let Amazon do that for us. Uh, we don't believe that our customers should learn how to run you know, big data technologies. We will do that, they just get to benefit from it. So we sort of give them that, that opportunity on, on a couple of different angles. Let's talk about cloud trails, which is the announcement here at Amazon. Obviously, uh, Amazon is dipping their toe in the water in a real way. You got VDI, managed desktops uh, with um, workspaces, they announced. Um, but CloudTrail also shows you that, hey, we're serious about compliance. We're serious about getting the little things, the minimum table stakes, as we say in the cube. Yeah. What's your relationship with that? Operationally, how does that make organizations behave differently? How does that scale your opportunity? So, you know, I think CloudTrail is uh, fundamentally a strategic enabler for AWS. Um, I think it's beyond just providing uh, uh, data for compliance use cases and others. I think the inability or the lack of visibility or the opaqueness, if you want, of, of cloud infrastructures you know, around the world, not just Amazon, but everybody else's, has been a major roadblock in adoption of this, these technologies or cloud by large enterprises, right? And you know, when you run on premise, you can see everything. You get the audit data, who's doing what, who's touching with infrastructure components, who's changing passwords, who's doing you know, what to our network. You couldn't do that in, in Amazon or in any other place, right? So with this, with this announcement today, you know, what they've actually done is they've removed a massive roadblock from serious companies adopting this and gaining a comfort level about what the users are doing and what's being changed in their infrastructure, right? And you know, everybody in their right mind wants to have that for their production, production system. Well, how are you guys uh, competing with Splunk? Obviously they're going public. Um, how do you compare against Splunk? How do you talk, to, talk about the competition? That's my favorite question. Um, so, you know, Splunk is a, Splunk's a good company, right? They've, they've sort of paved, the, paved uh, the road for this market. Um, we think that we're fundamentally different than Splunk in, in a few core ways. First, we're SaaS, we talk about that, everybody understands that. It's, you know, we reduce, dramatically reduce the to total cost of ownership uh, that our customers have to um, sort of spend on, on running these technologies and gaining the benefits. Second is that uh, we're highly elastic, so for a lot of you know, uh, use cases where there's a lot of bursting, a lot of seasonality, like think about online retail where a company might have 10 times more um, uh, data that during the Christmas season than during the rest of the year, it's really hard to plan for that. It's really hard to deploy, sort of build out the church for Sunday for the rest of the 10 months of the year. So we don't force them to do that. We provision for the mean and we expand and contract our product footprint and as such translate those cost savings to our customers. But that's ultimately not fundamentally. Uh, so you know, it's really SaaS, but yeah. they announced uh, their availability of cloud trails um, thing with this. But they use Amazon machine images. Mm -hmm. That's different, that's, that's API based. So they're bolting their deal on to the software, right? So that's fundamentally the difference, your SaaS, cloud, their enterprise. Well, you know, the, it'll be up to the customers to decide what's the right way to SaaS, right? We believe that, you know, we from the get-go architected our product to leverage the Amazon uh, services as an API. So to us, data center is this virtual thing that we can spin up 10 times as much capacity as we want on demand, right? Um, porting on-premise technology into, into the cloud is an entirely different proposition, right? And we've seen uh, how that goes. And you know, we'll, we'll let the market decide what the right, right way is. Well, some apps are, you know, go easier than others. So That's right, right, exactly. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it's going to go. Yeah. I mean, but fundamentally, the way that we compete with, with, with our, our main competitor, Splunk, is that you know, we've invested into the machine learning capabilities, um, which we believe are fundamental in actually conquering this data yeah. set. I mean, Human the game, the game is just starting. I mean, the yeah. game is, 
to me, this is such a huge market. I always say to people, this is the next Google is in this market, because that's a search paradigm. You guys are discovery technology, right. all the contextual behavioral data. Yeah. I think the next revolution is going to be right in your wheelhouse. So, yeah. uh, be fun to watch, we'll be tracking you guys. Bruno, thanks for coming on theCUBE, appreciate it. Uh, tech athlete, another tech athlete, love getting, uh, talking to the guys who run strategy and founding product team. That means they know the product and they can talk about the chessboard. Thanks yeah. for coming on, live here in Las Vegas with theCUBE. We'll be right back after this short break for the next guest.